feeble knees will be strengthened and the discouraged will be So exalted upon high the name of Jesus, magnified, I'm glorified, Christ Jesus. who died is now glorified king of all kings lord of all lords the i am that i am the alpha the omega the beginning and the end hallelujah the first and the last hallelujah none before him huh? and none after him so come on and give him the praise come on and give him the glory hallelujah had it not been for Jesus who was on our side, oh, where would we be? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I give him the praise. I give him the glory. I give him the honor for what he has done for us. 25 years. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Many didn't make it to see 25 years, but we are here, hallelujah, and we are still standing, hallelujah. So give him the praise, hallelujah. He deserves the glory, hallelujah. 
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come magnify the Lord with me and let everything, hallelujah, that has breath, hallelujah. Oh, give him the praise, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah, hallelujah, oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah. The songwriter says, Jesus, I'll never forget what you have done for me, what you have done for us over the 25 years, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, brought us through a mighty long way, and he will continue to take us all the way, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me, yeah. Jesus, I'll never forget oh, how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me up. Jesus, I'll never forget oh, never. Oh, my Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. No, no, no. Jesus, I'll never Oh, how you set me free. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, I'll never forget your name. My Jesus. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Oh, Jesus, I'll never forget. Can I forget? 
Jesus, you're excellent. 
the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some praise in the house tonight. Hallelujah. 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 He's excellent tonight. Hallelujah. Let's give him some praise in the house. Hallelujah. 25 years. Let's give the Lord a shout this evening. Hallelujah. He's excellent. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's wonderful. Let's praise him in the house. I'm going to ask the church to stand tonight and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let's praise him in the house tonight. Hallelujah. He's excellent. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Give God praise tonight. Give him thanks tonight. Hallelujah. 25 years and we're still standing. Hallelujah. But God, hallelujah. He's excellent tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the praise team to help me with this song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The praise team. Hallelujah. We want to sing unto the Lord tonight. Give me Jesus in the morning. Give me Jesus in the evening. Every minute of the day. Give me Jesus. You give me Jesus in the morning. Give me Jesus in the evening.
Hallelujah. We had Jesus. Hallelujah. If we didn't have Jesus to oh God, 25 years, what would have happened to us? But we give God thanks tonight that we had him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 25 years. Think of 25 years. Oh, God. All those things that he had blocked from us. Oh, God. All those valleys that he walked us through. The hard times. Oh, God. We thank him this afternoon. We give him praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God thanks tonight. I'm going to ask the stone room to put the scripture up on the overhead for us tonight. We're going to be reading from Philippians 1, 3 to 11. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask the church, please stand with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. All for your fellowship in the gospel from the first until now. Even as it is meant for me to think on this of, of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bond and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye are all partakers of my grace. And this I pray, that your, that your love may abound he more than more in knowledge and in all judgment. Verse 11, we read together. Being fulfilled with the fruit of righteousness, which are by Christ Jesus Christ, unto glory of God of God. Hallelujah. That's the reading of God's holy word. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to go right into our congregational hymn, which is hymn 473. I'm going to ask Pastor Thelma, someone to help me. The praise team. Amen. Hymn 473. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask the church, please stand. Hallelujah. Psalm is Jasmine, Pastor Thelma. Victory in Jesus. Praise the Lord. 473. Ready? I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood atoning then I repented of my sins and won the victory. 
Somebody give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Somebody say victory. I can't hear you. Somebody said victory. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet and shout victory. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hey, hallelujah. Hi, 
Jesus. I don't know about hey. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know about you. But 25 years. Hey, somebody said thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him tonight. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise him. Hallelujah. Oh, jump on your feet and praise him. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Ay, God. 25. You may take your seat. Amen. 25 years. But God. Somebody said, but God. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, God. But God. I say no more. But God. His faithfulness leads on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I give honor to him uh, this evening. Amen. Uh, it is the reason why I'm standing here tonight. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you may not understand why I'm praising him, uh, but 25 years, I need not to say anything more. But God. <laughs> hallelujah. So I give honor to him uh, this afternoon, amen, uh, to the angel of this house, to our Pastor Robert Essington, hallelujah, glory to God, uh, to all the ministers, the evangelists, our mothers, amen, uh, hallelujah. Our speaker this afternoon, Pastor Brown, to his family, amen, his church family, God bless you. Thank you for coming. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. To pass the sing. God bless you, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Co Apostle Cooper. Amen. Hallelujah. My dear son, Brother Finn. Pastor Gail, Prophetess Grace. Hallelujah. Uh, to my friends, amen. To the church family. Just, I don't want to forget anyone, but I just want you to know that you're in Father's, Father's house. You're in Liberty Hall. You are welcome to praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We came here for one purpose this afternoon, and to, it is to lift him up higher. Hallelujah. To praise him. So, hallelujah. So, don't be too sophisticated. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> that you can praise him. Hallelujah. Because he's the reason why we're here tonight. So, I, I welcome you. I welcome you, my friends from Bible school. You know, Sister Pansy. Amen. Hallelujah. I just don't want to leave out anyone. Sister Liz. Amen. To the people of God, you know who you are. Amen. Pastor Gail, I did acknowledge you, right? God bless you. So again, welcome. Amen. Make yourself comfortable. You are in Father's house. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's stand in the house and give it up for First Lady and Pastor Robert. 25 years. Come on, people of God. Let's give the Lord a praise for them this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for you, Pastor Robert and Pastor Thelma. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We give God thanks for them. They're always praying. They're always encouraging. We thank God for a leader of the leaders of this ministry. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just want to thank God for them. At this time, we're going to go right into our offering. I'm going to ask the ushers to get in place, hallelujah, moving right along, hallelujah, we want the word tonight, the encouragement, amen, 25 years, we need to hear the word, amen, 
Hallelujah. That's what keeps us going. Hallelujah. That's what strengthens us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to stand again. We're going to do the offering. You're in the hands of the hushers. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to ask the church, please stand. I know we're tired, but we're here to celebrate Jesus tonight. Amen? We're here to celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we look back over our lives and see where God has brought us from, what he has brought us through, hallelujah, we are to be praising him. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's give the Lord some praise in the house tonight. He's worthy of it all tonight. Hallelujah. We serve a big and mighty God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Right in this ministry, I've seen God done some great things. Hallelujah. God has moved some mountains in this ministry. So we are here to give God praise tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I am blessed in the city. Blessed in the field, blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must be. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and property must be. For the devil is defeated. I am blessed. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the flesh. Minister Kerr. Minister Byron Kerr. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. 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 Bless. Minister Byron, blessed. 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 Bless in the city. Blessed in the field. I'm blessed when we come and where we go. We cast out every stronghold. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. Byron Kerr. Praise the Lord. Minister Kerr. Hallelujah. We're going to go right, moving right along. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to hear from voices of praise. Hallelujah. And the next voice you'll hear is the voice of Pastor Thelma. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. Great things he has done. Amen. Are you happy in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. When I'm happy, I make some noise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
I will remember. I will remember. Hallelujah. on and praise him. Yes, yes he is mine. Him will I die. Him will I die. One more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in horses. But I will remember the name of my God. Yes, he is the warrior. Yes, he is mine. Him will I trust. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some would trust in chariots. Some would trust in horses. Hallelujah. But over these 25 years, we have been trusting in the name of our God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And he has never failed us. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you tonight to keep on trusting in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm here to introduce the speaker. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Some would trust in chariots. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just before I read Pastor Samuel Brown's bio, I just want to tell you the little that I do know of him. Then I read the bio. Amen. Hallelujah. I was uh, on Facebook one night and on a Sunday night I generally browse the Facebook. Amen. And I was on Faith Gospel Apostle Naomi Francis Church. Amen. And he spoke there, and I was truly, truly, maybe about, maybe about a year ago or so, I was truly blessed by his ministry on that day. He said a couple of things that as he was preaching, amen, and it bear witness with my spirit. And when we decided to have our 25th anniversary, I started to look around for a speaker, but I was a bit hesitant to ask her for the number. Anyway, I did ask her for his number. And with that, I called him. Amen. So I just want to tell you to fasten your seatbelts. Amen. So Pastor Samuel Brown, hallelujah, is a dynamic preacher from the House of Refuge Apostle Church. Orac Ministries in Osing. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Osing, Osing. Go ahead and pronounce it for me. Osing in, in New York. He's a man of God who is empowered and led by the Holy Spirit. His office and ministry. It's the manifestation of the ministry gifts 
that Christ gave to the church. He has been preaching the undiluted word of God for over 15 years, internationally and locally. He is no respecter of race, class, or culture, and has subsequently preached to every denomination. Pastor Brown has traveled to various countries, impacting lives and demonstrating the power of God. He studied at the Evangelical Bible Institute in Newark, New Jersey. Pastor Brown is happily married and is the father of four children. He is indeed anointed and appointed for the time we are living in. Stand to your feet and make Pastor Samuel Brown welcome. Church, Pastor Samuel Brown, Pastor Samuel Brown congregation. You just grab a hold of your neighbor wherever you are as the media team will work hard on my mic. Just spot me on wherever you are, hold the neighbor's hands. Oh, oh yeah, it's Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's it's normal. Uh, keep working, media team. You're almost there. It's normal. Keep working on my mic. Amen. Uh, one sister was singing with her mic. I, I like the sound of that one. The moderator of the mic. Is, is that the one I have? Yeah, um, I appreciate that one. Take that one to work. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's bow your heads for a moment. We're just going to pray. The presence of God is in this place. I want you to understand that you're touching somebody who is going through somebody who needs this touch of yours. And as you hold the person's hands, you might be holding the hands in the natural. But there is a radiation of the anointing that's on you that is now radiating on them. As you touch them, and as you're touching God, God is going to touch them through your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come tonight on this 25th year anniversary. You have brought this ministry from a mighty long way. Father, you have made them a movement in this region. This region where they are fighting demons and devils. You have placed them on this spot of ground where the turf is tough and rough with all the crimes and the violence. Hallelujah. But God, as you have sent St. Paul in dangerous territories, so you have sent this ministry. Right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you that you will anoint this moment and anoint even me. Hallelujah. To speak thy word to thy people, to motivate and to strengthen. Hallelujah. And to challenge them and to give them clarity and understanding of where they are and what their assignments are. 
for this season and time that you're living in. Father, we thank you right now for the overseer of this church. We thank you for those who are serving alongside this great leadership. I pray, God, for the supporting cast that you have placed in their life that will enable and aid them to take the assignment that you have called them to, to the next level. Lord, I want to say thank you tonight for my family who have journeyed here with me and for Minister Margaret and for Sister Shamela who have taken time out to be here with us tonight. Lord, I want to say thank you. Thank you for those who came just because they are curious. I want to say thank you for every Zacchaeus. I want to say thank you, God, for every John. Thank you for every David who just panting off of the water brooks. Lord, I just want to say thank you for the musicians. Thank you for the keys that they are playing right now. Thank you for the ushers. Thank you, God, for the praise and worship. Thank you for the choir. Thank you for the children, for the young people who are working. Thank you, God, for every single person tonight. Hallelujah. And I pray in the name of Jesus that your word will go up and everything else will come down. Bind every devil right now and every false spirit that will try to stop your word from penetrating the lives and all of your people. Lord, I pray tonight that you will use my vocals to speak hallelujah to every soul. And I pray that there will be a penetration of thy word. Hallelujah. I pray it will move from the head to the heart and even down to the spirit. I pray after tonight, God, that somebody's life will be transformed. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that no weapon formed against this moment will be able to prosper. Hide me now. Use me as you please. I surrender everything to you now. My mind, my body, my soul, every member of my... I surrender them all to you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I say, have your way. Have your way in this place. Shake the rug from underneath our feet tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray you will unravel us tonight. Shake us until we are shaken tonight. In the name of Jesus. Everything that's on us. That don't belong on us. God I shake it off tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the anointing flow. In this house. Let fire burn. In this house. Let rivers of living water. Flow from our bellies tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, have your way in this place tonight. Let the holy angel encamp around this edifice tonight. Let the fire of God burn every individual in this place tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, I cry out for your help tonight. Oh God, I can do it on my own. I can do it without you. You got to be here tonight. If you don't show up, God might as well we leave this room. But God, we know that you promised that you will show up tonight. And in the name of Jesus, we anticipate your arrival in this house tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we look for the king and the kingdom tonight. Let thy kingdom come. 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 In this place tonight, we await your kingdom to move. In the mighty name of Jesus, have your divine way. And we say thank you in advance. Thank you for the miracle. In advance, thank you for the signs and the wonders. In advance, thank you for the breakthrough. We won't wait for the battle to be over. We are going to shout now. So let everything that has breath open your anointed mouth and shout now. Like illusion in your mind. Oh, my shandala of a host. 
give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Yeah. Oh, God, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, Zion, give him a worship. Shout on a God with a voice of triumph. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know what you come to do. I come to praise him tonight. I come to do more than clapping my hands. I come to tell him thank you for 25 years. We've been through hell, but we're still here. Look at your neighbor, your neighbor. You've been through hell, but you're still here. The devil should have kept you home, but it's too late now. You, you got a pep in your step. There's somebody came in here for a breakthrough. I'll give you 30 seconds to praise God out of your shoes. Praise him till you know it's over. Praise him like this is your chauffeur. Somebody blow the chauffeur in this house. Yeah, my shot of a host. Huh? Mm -hmm. ah. Oh, I, I, I've been through too much hell not to have a praise tonight. This is my celebrative moment, and I came to celebrate the good things he has done. And I came to tell the devil, you lost again. I need a victor people in the house to give God a victor praise. Ah, ah, ah. Oh my! Oh, I gotta, I beat you too much. I gotta praise. My bishop always said, I gotta praise God first. You see, praise is what we give to God. And when we praise him, then he responds in blessing us. See, before I ask God for anything, I must acknowledge that he is God. Hallelujah. So when I praise God, I initiate contact with God. Hallelujah. And sometimes people don't understand your praise. Because most times your praise doesn't make sense. You see, what you're going through doesn't match up with your praise. And that's the power of praise. I need somebody in here who knows that, guess what? I shouldn't be praising God right now. Too much is going on. I shouldn't be praising God right now. But I'm willing to mess up the devil's equilibrium by giving God a ridiculous praise. Somebody open your mouth. If there is any walls in your life, this is your moment to bring them down. See, I, I, I'm talking about a praise that get the preacher nervous. I'm talking about a praise that have the preacher to get into consideration. Will he get a chance to preach tonight? I'm talking about a praise that said, God, you got to come now. I need about 50 people in here to shout like you need God to come right now. You got to come now. Mm -hmm. Oh my. You see, hold on a second, musician. If God is ordinary, then you can give him an ordinary praise. But if God is extraordinary, then you ought to give him an extraordinary praise. A praise beyond how you feel. A praise that tells you trouble, you don't stand a chance. Let everything that has bread shout right now. Woo. I see about five people in here who are saying preacher even when you stop I'm going to praise God 
I see about five people say, musician, even if you don't play, play right now, I'm going to praise God. Because if it's real, we don't need the music. Somebody, I want to hear the voices shout. Let the music join you while you shout. You, you better quit until something might have break out in here tonight. I say you better quit but something might break out in here tonight. Just in case the devil don't understand what's taking place with your praise, I just want you to praise him one more time. Shout one more time. In, in, in fact, in fact, this praise is not even for you. This praise is for the person next to you. You got a spirit of discernment, you know it. And you discern they're going through something that's entering their praise. I want you to praise God for their breakthrough. Praise God till you know they're coming out. Sixty more seconds. Sixty more seconds. Sixty more seconds. Hallelujah. I want you to put your hands together for Pastor Robert and Thelma Hissington. Did I say it right? Clap your hands for your leaders tonight. Amen. For everyone who is leading next to them, give God praise. Amen. 25 years. Uh, my bio wasn't wrong. Because I make sure if I'm preaching at a church for the first time, I need representation. I, I, I don't want you to read a bio and then you wonder now my entire family, everything I own is in this room right now. And when I said own, I don't mean ownership because God owns them. But everything that belongs to me, every gift that God gives to me, they're in the house right now. My wife is here. My two sons are here. My two daughters are here. All my four children and my wife, we're all here. Yes. Amen. And, and you can notice, I, I know she doesn't mind. My daughter, um, she, her ear is just growing back now. She, she has been battling leukemia for a year and some now. And... Uh, uh, she's amazing because when she was diagnosed, <laughs> when she was diagnosed, she said something to me that will never leave me. She said, Dad, I'm not a cancer patient. Cancer is just a part of my journey. When, when the doctor came to her and, and, you know, they spoke to us first and then they went to her and she knew already what she had before she was diagnosed. Because on her way to the hospital, she said, Dad, I know I have cancer. And, you know, I rebuke her, you know. And said, don't you say such a thing, <laughs> you know. And when they came with the report, she said, I told you. And then the doctors were amazed because of her attitude. And she looked at them and she said, I'm not worried. As long as my dad is not worried, I'm not worried. And then she looked at me and said, Dad, are you worried? I said, no. She, she told the doctors, she said, I have a praying father. And I have a household of siblings that love God, 
So I know I have support. And I'm going to be all right. She's amazing, I'm telling you. And she's going to be, in fact, she's all right. Amen. She's all right. Amen. Pray for her. I have Minister Margaret, our administrator of Horat Ministries. She's here. Can you stand so everyone can see you? She, amen. Wonderful woman of God. And, 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 and if, you watch, if you watch our service, all the streaming, all the media, all the bio, all the graphics that you'll see, and, and, and you know, everything in terms of PR, the lady who's responsible, the one you dialogue with, Sister Shamala, she's right here. So if you, have, if you need a bio to be created, if, if you need church announcements, amen, if, if photographs, she, she's just, she's the one to see, amen, amen. God bless you, we love her, and thank, thank you. And everyone who came tonight, let me see somebody who's here for the very first time. For the very first time. Apart, apart from Minister Margaret. <laughs> we just want to tell you thank you for being here. And there is a word from the Lord for you. Amen. Uh, I won't labor, but I, I, I won't preach long, but I will preach strong. And I, I realize the theme for the year is the year of reconciliation. Reconciliation. Amen. And I, I understand it. And um, the theme for this conference, and I, I, whenever time I go to preach at a conference, I like to stay in line with the theme because the reason why one would invite you to come is to help them with what God is saying to them. So I won't deviate from that. So don't hold me hostage to one message. Amen. Because I cannot exhaust the word of God in one message. And I'm the messenger. I'm not the message. Amen. So go with me to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. And for continuation of scriptures, I want to focus your attention also to Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 13 from verse 12 rather to verse 16 but this is your theme scripture Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 and I'll read being confident of this very thing that he which have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 6. That he be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience Inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessings, I will bless thee. Multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For when men verily swear by the greater an, an oath for confirmation is to the them an end of all strife. I'll stop there. I want to preach tonight from the subject and it's your theme God's faithfulness leads on. And for a subtopic, I want to prophesy that he have made 
your promise. I want you to talk to yourself, get selfish, and tell yourself he has made me promise. He made me a promise. God sent me here to tell you that he have made you a promise. I have made you a promise that I intend to keep. You may be seated. It's going to be a rough ride because one of the issues we face in the church is a lack of information. Before we shout the walls down, I must give you something to shout about. It wouldn't profit us nothing if I were coming here and have a revival moment and you leave without substance. You don't apply excitement. You don't apply charisma. You apply the word. Somebody said word. It is very important, it is very interesting that the writer of Hebrew would use Abraham, who is referred as the father of faith. He was the one that stood out the most in terms of being challenged before he would inherit the things that was promised to him. Promise is connected to hope. And hope is the center or the core of patience. You can only have patience for what you are hoping for. Hope then is the exercising of faith. For the promise is never for now. Promise is futuristic. That's why you have to exercise patience in God. Why? Faith works with patience. It's the same concept with faith and the word of God. Why? Because faith comes yet in action. When it hears the word of God. Uh, the Bible said that faith without work is dead. But faith can't go to work without the word of God. Because faith comes by the hearing of the word. Wherever the word of God has been spoken with faith, faith activates. See, faith remains dormant until it hears the word of God. I know some pe preacher preaches like this and they said, now faith is. See, it's no such thing as a now faith. Faith is always. Faith is whenever time you need it. You just need to speak the word and faith sits there. Can we demonstrate? That's faith. Sits there waiting to hear. But not to hear any and anything. But to hear the word of God. Now if the word of God is God. Then when the, you hear the word you're hearing God. And God's word comes to give you instruction. God's word comes to help you, to bless you, to do something. It's active. But faith there, and faith won't move 
until it hears the word of God. So if you speak the word of God, if you said if you are sick and you said I shall live and not die, then faith hears the word of God and faith gets to you. Uh, faith then, my brothers and sisters, faith works with patience. When faith and patience are working together, it causes things to change. Are you here with me? Now, change, can I teach before I hope? Change happens when patience is being exercised. In other words, you have to wait for change to come. Mm. Uh, it is in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, the Bible decrees, and it declares this, and I said it. It said, but they that wait, mm, come on, preacher, preach with me. But they that wait, you see, but is a conjunction change of statement. So whatever was happening before now, now it's going to change. So, but watch me now. So, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That means it doesn't matter how weak you were before now. If you are in waiting on God, then you just waiting on God is going to bring you into strength. Yeah. yeah, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Hello, they shall mount up with wings as to preach with me, they shall run and not be, and they shall walk and not. Yeah, all about waiting on God. So, change now, change don't happen overnight, change is gradual. Somebody said, Change is gradual. Yeah, it, it is a process. And while you are waiting for it to happen, you have to adjust to the happenings that will occur that is totally contradictory to the promise. Uh, see, most time than ever, when God makes you a promise, immediately things will begin to move in the opposite direction. Uh, and you have to know uh, that it is not a bad thing. Why? It's not a bad thing. Why? It's because it's a war between the natural situation and the spiritual declaration. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you with me, preacher? All right, good. I I'm waiting for five. I got one. I'm waiting for four more. All right. I'm working with the one for now. You see, things only change for the worse in the natural. But in the spiritual, you are moving at a great pace. Yeah. You are moving at a great clip. How, how you, 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 you can know this is when all hell is breaking loose, but you still have joy in the Lord. How, how you will know this is when you still feel strong and the level of your expectation increases every moment that things are not going right. It doesn't make no sense because you're supposed to respond to the natural issue your natural circumstance your natural problems but how dare you responding differently from what's going on in the natural realm of things why because a just shall live by uh, uh, woo. I'm sorry I'm not supposed to knock the pulpit uh, 
uh, it's, it's when you are still maintaining your praise. It is here then that you realize that you are not slothful, but you are following those who are moving in the same purpose. Somebody shout purpose. Now, uh, when you are going in, the, in a certain direction, you have to find people who are going where you are going. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Read between the lines. Uh, I have to use the same method of people who have been there, hallelujah, and done that. Uh, oh, God, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, that's why I don't follow everybody. Uh, I don't indulge in everything that everybody else are in. Yes, sir, it has to be what I'm interested in. Come on. If it is not going to take me where I want to go, I don't want it. You, you, you can't go everywhere. The winds are blowing. Come on, talk back to me, somebody. You have to go where the promise leads you to go. Uh, is there anybody in here God made a promise? And sometimes you're going in a direction that you don't understand. And sometimes you want to question God. Sometimes you want to change your GPS. Yes, you're using Google Maps, but Google Google Maps seems not to take you where God promised you that you would go. Because all you're seeing around you are hell and high water. Things look chaotic and you say, okay, let me move from Google and let me use, what's the other one? Ways, because ways will tell you where the police are and where the accidents are. But like Abraham, when God said, Leave and go to a place, I'll show you. Abraham had to trust him, and sometimes Abraham diverted because the GPS seems as if it's leading him into places he doesn't want to go. What do you do when God made your promise? that you're going to be rich and you can't hold a job. What do you do when God told you that there is ministry on your life and you're going to travel the world and you can't even get a visa? What do you do when God tells you that you're going to have children, husbands and wives and you're still living by yourself at home? You see, sometimes if you're not careful, hallelujah, the promise of God will sit you down and teach you how to wait. Oh, God. Oh, God. If you want to develop faith, my brothers and sisters, you have to follow people of faith. Uh, don't follow that joker down the street hmm, who run as soon as something breaks. No. Uh, if you want to develop patience now, you have to move around people who are full of patience. Uh, yes, yeah, show me your company and I'll tell you who you are. Uh, oh, my grandmother died a long time ago. Still remember that. Uh, if you want to develop patience, hmm, you have to move around people who are full of patience. Uh, it, it, it is proven, my brothers and sisters, that it takes faith and patience uh, to inherit anything that was promised to you. We are talking about faithfulness of God, are we not? <laughs> yes, so God then is not slack concerning his promise. So you can't be slothful to receive. Oh God, help me here. He is not going to reduce his intensity so you can reduce your capacity to handle what he has given to you. Can I say it again? 
I said, God is not slack concerning his promises. If he promised you something, he's going to come through for you. I wish I had 10 people in here who are living on a promise. Oh God, if you're not living on a promise, sit down. It's all right. I won't be mad with you. But I came for the four that are living on a promise. If you're living on a promise, open your mouth, jump on your feet, and give God a praise like your promise is about to come through. Uh, sit down please uh, sit sit I gotta work tonight uh, oh God uh, he's not going to reduce it mm, tell your neighbor he's not going to reduce it uh, in other words he's not gonna make things easy for you so you can just go through it uh, you see life is not gonna be easy for you so you just go through it uh, you're gonna deal with some sickness deal with some pain deal with some trials uh, you're gonna have some haters if, if you wanna learn how to love, uh, you're going to learn how to deal with the haters around you. Uh, oh God, uh, if you can't manage your haters, uh, you will never learn how to love. If you can't deal with being hungry, you will never know how to deal with being full. I feel God in here. Somebody said he won't reduce it. He won't reduce sit down please you make me want to preach he's not going to reduce his intensity so you can't reduce your capacity to handle what is given to you you gotta have capacity look at your neighbors and neighbor you gotta have capacity you can't be too shallow and receive this promise hallelujah you gotta have capacity because when God's getting ready to download some things in your life you got to have room you got to have room for improvement you got to have capacity to deal with the hell that will come against you when God made you a promise if you're going to be successful in anything you got to have capacity to handle success Oh God, sit down please, you make me want to preach. Oh God, tell somebody you got to be prepared for it. Oh, that was the wrong neighbor. You know you're talking to the wrong person. You need to shout across the room and say, neighbor, you got to be prepared for it. In fact, prophesy and say, prepare yourself. Yeah, prepare yourself. Yeah, leave some room for God to fill. You see, sometimes we are too full with baggages. We got to empty the classic of our mind. Empty the classic of our behavior. And leave some room for God to fill. Oh God, I know amen lights. Oh, I got my five over here. Oh, God, I'm getting ready to leave some room for God. You're going to empty the junk out of your trunk. Oh God, that's why you're not going to be conformed to the dictate of this world. But you're going to be transformed by the way you think. Slap your neighbors and change the way you think. And that will help you to be of capacity. Uh, leave room. Uh, leave room, leave room, leave room. Uh, leave room for God. Uh, that's why I got to make time for prayer. Uh, I'm leaving room for God. Uh, that's why when they talk back to me and talk down to me, I don't talk back to them uh, in the same way they spoke to me. Come on. Because uh, I got to leave room. That's why I don't knock you upside the head. Hallelujah. When the gossip, I heard it, but I, I act as if you, I didn't hear anything because I'm leaving room. Oh God, that's why I love those who hate me because I'm leaving room. That's why I love and hate not because I'm leaving room. That's why I don't backslide because I'm leaving room. That's why whatever state I find myself in, therein I learn to be content because I'm leaving room. You don't think I need a booty call too? <laughs> Come on, you don't think lonely life uh, gets to me too? <laughs> you don't think I need a man and a woman too? <laughs> you don't think I need some money too? <laughs> I could do what they do to get it, <laughs> but I'm leaving room. <laughs> oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so God made me a promise <laughs> and I gotta leave room <laughs> so he can fill the promise in my life. <laughs> I need about 10 people in here who are leaving room. <laughs> You shout like you're losing your mind. Gotta 
to leave room. You got to give God something to work with. God won't work with nothing. You got to give him something to work with. Slap your neighbor and say, give him something to work with. Um, you may not have the money. You may not have the culture. You may not have the education. But you have your faith. Oh, my God. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. It carries the evidence of things I don't need to see. Oh, God. You, you, you can't confine a person of faith. Because uh, even when Paul and Silas was in prison, uh, they pray and praise God by faith uh, until prison door have to open. Uh, you see, faith opens doors for you. Uh, faith is all you got. Uh, you don't got nothing else but faith. Uh, so excuse me, let me praise God. Uh, even when my house is in ruins. Because uh, that's the exercising of my faith. I feel a praise break. Somebody take a praise break. Oh, let's take a praise break. Let's take a praise break. Let's take a praise break. Somebody jump on if you take a praise break. This is a praise of faith. I don't see it yet, but I believe it. I'm not experiencing it yet, but I believe it. Somebody take a praise break. Don't wait for the battle to be over. Somebody shout now. Sit down, please. Oh, God. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Leave some room for God to fill. For he's going to give you so much that you will not have room enough to receive. That sounds like overflow to me. Can I prophesy in this house? The years that the canker worm and the palmer worm has eaten up. God said, I shall restore. Is there anybody in here needs some restoration? You have lost some stuff. And God said, I'm getting ready to give you double for your trouble somebody scream like it's about to take place oh god oh god i feel like preaching here let me say that God is about to give you that lady over there yes you God is about to give you so much stuff you won't be able to manage it you're going to have to call the neighbors across the street in fact let me tell you something he's going to give enough to bless your friends and your enemies your enemies are going to become friends with you when God finished blessing you somebody shout up give God praise for her breakthrough because God is about to give her overflow Somebody shot all the floor. Hold on, yeah. Sit down, please. Y'all make me want to preach. <laughs> oh, God. You won't have room enough to receive it. <laughs> Glory to God. It's going to be more than what you can manage. <laughs> oh, I'm prophesying here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it's coming. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> Is it our moment speaking my heavenly language in this church? Oh my call I feel it it's coming musician everything that God promised you it's on its way I don't know what kind of messages you've been hearing for these years but I came by here tonight to let you know it's not over until God said it's over and you won't die until everything he promised you come to fruition somebody give him a shout like it's happening right now open your mouth and scream and get the devil upset it's coming 
it's coming it's coming I feel it in my spirit it's coming Holy name of hand and prophesy tell them it's coming it's coming it's coming I heard the Lord said get ready I heard the Lord said get ready for the business deal I heard him say I have given you the name for the business already I told you that marriage is eminent oh my gosh Shanda is there anybody in here who desire to be married if you're not faithful enough how can you just jump on your feet I'm going to praise God for you because God said marriage is eminent true story there is two sisters my wife and my children they're here I can't lie one Sunday evening while I was preaching just like this in the middle of my message God said declare marriage and challenge those who want to get married to line up in front of you and lay hands on them can I tell you two sisters got up hallelujah my God one it seems as if it would never ever happen she didn't have her paperwork and the man she was in love with didn't have his so you know it didn't look like it's possible at all the other one was too old and almost in retirement stage hallelujah but yet still they believe I lay hands on them and prophesy both of them are married now hallelujah I feel God in here so when I said if you want to get married I'm not joking I came an assignment tonight that God promised you a husband and a husband he promised you and all he need is your act Activation of your faith. So let me repeat myself. Is there anybody in here who want to get married? I want you to praise God right now like you're losing your Holy Ghost. Man. Come on, Zion. I didn't come here to play. My caution in the outside. I came with a prophetic voice. Somebody praise God because marriage is eminent. Eminent. Ow, ow, ow. Shut up. Heal him. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, ow. ow. Eminent. 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 Marriage is eminent. Marriage is eminent. Eminent, 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 eminent. That's faith. Faith don't make no sense. Faith is ridiculous. Faith is not natural. Faith is supernatural. And God said marriage is eminent in this house. Watch the hands of God. Do me a favor. I need about 10 faith people in here to jump on your feet and push your hands towards them. Come on, put your hands towards them and say, husband, come now. Shout, husband, come now. You can't get fatigue. You can't get fatigue. For what that does is to slow down what God wants to do. It's coming. It's coming. And God's going to give you more than you can manage. Woo! Yes, design him. 
God said, I'm going to give it to you just the way you designed him. Come on, church. That's what faith does. Faith mess up the equilibrium. Faith is not usual. It's unusual. And this is a faith service because God made you a promise. You start the business over and over and the business keep failing. Run up here right now. You start the business, it fail. God give you the business name. Hallelujah. God said, come, I'm going to make sure I let the world see you. Hallelujah. You can't get fatigued. Somebody say, you can't get fatigued. Yeah, he promised you the business. Is that you? He promised you the business. He won't fail this time. Strike again. That's what I heard God said. God said, strike again. That means you're going to go back and start again. Yeah, you're not a failure because you're failing. You're only a failure if you stop trying. And God said, faith had to hear the word. And now the word has been released that your business deal is here. Start the business now. I command you by the Holy Ghost, start the business now. Now it's going to work. Now it's going to work. Now it's going to work. Now, somebody shout, now it's going to work. Take your seat, y'all. Let me finish preaching. Woo, somebody give God 60 seconds of ridiculous praise. For real, give God 60 seconds of ridiculous praise. Five minutes. Almost through. You can't get fatigued. For what that does is to slow down the moving of God on your life. Because most times we get fatigued because of anxiousness. See, anxiety leads to stress. And stress denotes that you are not exercising patience. Oh, you're preaching, man of God. It is patient then that would help you to believe that God can do it whenever he chooses. For you to understand that if God made you a promise, he's going to keep it. Oh God, why? God is not a man that he should like. In fact, God is not like man, Minister Morgan. He's not like your uncle. He's not like your boss. He's not like me. He's not like man at all. So when man made you a promise, sometimes they don't keep it. And it will make you bitter. Oh God, broken promises breathe discouragement and resentment. Oh God, help me, Holy Ghost. When you don't keep your promise, you will be taken for a liar. Oh God. And we have a lot of them around us. Yeah, but when God made you a promise, it's the end of all strife. I'm in Hebrew now. Because his promises are true. They are, yeah. And amen. You can bank on it. You can put a praise on it. You can speak about it. You can shout before the battle is over. But if God said you are a winner, that means you can't lose. Marco Shanda, if he makes you a promise, you can run and not be weary. You can walk and not faint. All you have to do is wait. Tell your neighbor and say, wait 
on him. Wait on him. Wait on the Lord and be of good cheer and he will strengthen your heart. Hallelujah. I'm getting to wait on the Lord. I'm getting ready to wait on the Lord because I will wait on him. Even when I'm lonely, can I preach to anybody in here? Look at your name as a neighbor. I will wait on him even when I get lonely and need somebody in my bed but I won't go outside of the will of God I will wait for only sugar daddy to come hallelujah because he made me a promise that he will never leave me nor forsake me come on musician preach with me now I'm taking it home Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he made me a promise that I'm the head and not the tail. He made me a promise that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper and all those lying tongues that raise against me they already condemned for my righteousness is not of my own but it's from the Lord say neighbor he made me a promise that if I give to him he'll give back to me press down shaken together and running over say neighbor Oh neighbor, he made me a promise that he will never leave me nor forsake me. So you can go about your business. I got a man who will never leave me nor forsake me. For when mother forsake me, then he promised me he'll be my daddy, yo. He'll be my mommy, yo. He'll be my lover, ho. He'll be my uncle, ho. He'll be my mother, ho. Who am I preaching to? It's a neighbor. Oh, neighbor. He made me a promise that he will be with me even in my struggles. I'm in the fire, but he can't burn me. I'm in the water, but I can't be drowned. Because he made me a promise. Tell a neighbor, say neighbor, I'm a walking promise. I'm a promised child. I'm a promised child. I'm a promised child. That's how God leads. He promises. Hallelujah. He promised my mother that he was going to give her a son of destiny. He promised her that if she carried this boy, he's going to be a preacher man. Look at me today. And after waiting for nine old months, enduring what the doctor said, he said that she should not give birth to this baby because he just got one. So she should have bought it. But it was a promise. Can I tell you something? I have four sisters and no brother. I'm the only son. Look what the devil had wanted my mother to abort. Her situation was not conducive to have another child. But if she didn't listen to God and listen to the wicked doctor, I wouldn't be here today. See, I'm a promise. I'm a possibility. God made me a Somebody said, I'm a daughter of promise. I'm a son of promise. I'm preaching because of promise. He promised Abraham. He said, I'll make your name great. He promised, he said, I'll bless those who bless you. I'm closing. And I'll curse those 
curses you. When he is multiplying, he will multiply. And I'm going to wait on him. Because I know he's coming. <laughs> For surety, I know he's coming. It's not an assumption. It's an assurance. And all I'm going to do is to leave the old principles of life. I'm not going to do over what was already done. But I'm going to build on what was laid. I'm moving on to perfection. Oh God, tell somebody to get rid of the dead works. And let's move on into promise. Because the Lord saw that he's going to do it for you, pastors. And if he said it, the devil can't stop it. He said, I made your promise and I'm determined to keep it. I told you that no weapon formed against you, didn't I? It's promised while you're still here. It's promised while you're still serving, Pastor. It's promised why I'm still saved. It's the promise of heaven why I refuse to go to hell. It's promise that's keeping me. Oh, can I testify? It's promise that's keeping me. I could have quit a long time ago. I could have walked away a long time ago. But promise would have me hold in a grip hold. Commandeered me. Captured my heart. And I can't go. Because God made me a promise. Promise helps me to humble myself. me humble because he doesn't walk with the proud and the scornful he walks with the humble promise makes me shut my mouth when I could say something back because I heard God said after you suffer a while I'll make you perfect I'll establish so while I'm waiting, I'm going to praise him. I'm not going to argue. I'm not going to question. While I'm waiting, I'm just going to praise him. Um, I wait for him, David said. More than they that watch for the morning. And I don't know who it is, but your summer is nigh. Your fall season has just ended. Winter is over. It's your springtime now. Oh, I just prophesy. You don't say nothing. Let me talk to this side over here. I said it's your springtime now. I promise you that every setback is for your comeback. You can tell the devil that I'm coming back. Somebody shout, I'm coming back, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. 
You may be sad now, but he promised you joy. He promised you love. They may hate you now, but God promised you that your very enemy is going to find peace with you. I made your promise. And I intend to keep it. I don't need much from you. I just need your faith and your patience. Because when I was looking for somebody great to swear by, I couldn't find nobody, Minister Margaret. So I swear by myself that blessing I shall bless you and multiply. God is a God who believes in reciprocity. I'm going to sow a seed in there too. In fact, I feel a 25 dollar seed. Put it right here. Can you write me a check, honey? $25. I need as much as you have possible. I'm going to challenge your faith. Put a $25 seed in this basket. And a challenge of your faith. I'm not one of those money preachers. I want you to know that right now. But I'm flowing the prophetic. A few Sundays ago at our church, I was preaching. And a sister brought an offering while I was preaching. And I asked, I didn't have the cash in my pocket, and I asked for somebody to run and sow a seed for me. A sister came up with a $20 bill and put it in my hands. I said, God bless you. And I saw it. And dozens of dozens of people sold. The Monday morning, I had an issue with my truck. And some God told me, he said, just, just say it. Don't ask, just say it. And I was dialoguing with one of my clients. And I said, he asked me, how is your truck? Because it was in the shop. The transmission was being fixed. And I said, it's in the shop. I'm getting it back today. But for me to pass TLC inspection, I have to do some stuff to it. The man said, listen, man, your family. He said, take it to whichever shop you want to take it. I need four tires and two shocks. I took it to Mavis Tire Discount, in my area. He texted me his credit card. It's on my phone. I'll show it to you. When the guy, he wrote up the invoice, gave it to me. I called him and said, are you sure about this? He said, why? I said, it's going to be $4,100. He said, didn't I say you're a family? This is not a black man. This is not my cousin. This is my uncle. This is a Caucasian man. Painful. I was coming. I, was, I picked up my wife today from her job. And one of my clients called me. God bless me some excellent clients. She was there hearing the conversation. And the person called me and said, can you pick me up tomorrow at 3.30 p.m.? I'm going to uh, Maryland. So I want you to take me to Manhattan so I can ride the train. And I will tell them I return. And I said, okay, yes, ma'am, I will. And my wife didn't know this, but she, I was in a difficult time. I mean, dry season, because if you do what I do, you're going to have dry season. All the business owners, you know, you're going to have dry season. And I have my, all my bills, I make sure I set it up where it comes out of my account. So that means I must make sure the money's in there. I didn't have the money. And I know I was going to work for them, because I have a contract with them. And I said, can you just give me a pre-payment? I need to do something. And she gave me a prepayment of $2,500. I, take care of my, I took care of my business. And today, my wife is there. She's a witness. After she gave me the schedule, or schedule, and we confirmed, asked her, 
Two minutes later, maybe less, the phone rang. She called back. And she said, by the way, that thing, it's a gift from us. In one week, I mean, I saw $20 just obeying the voice of God. And in one week, do the math, 2,500 plus 4,100. Do the math, do the math. With no strings attached. Not one person, but two. That's how God works. So when I said put a $25 seed, I'm not playing with your, with your feelings. I'm playing with your money. I'm telling you what God is doing right now. Can I give you something that blow your mind? During the pandemic, my wife is there, my children are there. I got a check to show you. During the pandemic, no one was allowed to drive in the city. In the heart of the pandemic, do you remember that time? Everything shut down. Manhattan was a ghost town. Come on, you could so while I'm talking. Because you're going to read this tonight, trust me. And to my surprise, one of my clients contracted the virus. And they called me and said, Sam, I know you're not working right now. What's going on? And the person said, I've built up immunity against the virus so you could get some, what do you call that? From, you could get it from the person. The plasma. Just in case you contract it, I could give you some plasma. And then she said, by the way, how are you doing? And she said, you meet me at this restaurant tomorrow this time. I was home, asked my wife, not working. I obeyed. I went. I got a check for twenty thousand dollars. I can't lie in front of my children or my wife. With no strings attached. Twenty thousand. I said, should I pay you back? She said, no. I just want to bless you. She's not even a Christian. That's how God works. I could give you testimonies after testimonies. I'm a blessed man. Why? Because I release when God said release. I, 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 want, I want you to stand with me. I'm closing right now. Stand with me. What's my intention to hold this long? I, I want to I wanna speak a word and those who dare to be open will be penetrated. Nothing negative is of God. God is a positive God. There's two things the devil fights the most is when you should release your seed and when you should give your life to God. He fights offering time and he fights the time of salvation. I want to release over this house tonight and all the visitors and all the next door neighbors because when God bless you, it's going to trickle down. It's going to be like a floodgate open and even your enemies are going to get blessed. Because the blessing of God is going to radiate from you. It's going to trickle down. Let me tell you something. Blessing does not always come through money. That sickness that you're afraid of, thinking it's going to kill you, God's going to bless your body. That the sickness is going to stay right in there and you're going to live a healthy life. See, sometimes we pray that God take it away. No, you want God to leave some stuff right where they are. But give you the vivacity 
and give you the tenacious nature that you need so that it can stay right there. It doesn't bother you. I release it that you don't leave this room and go back the same way you came. I release the spirit of faith. The faith like what the centurion had. That his servant was not in the parameter. He was, he was not hearing the conversation that he was having with Jesus. But his faith was so strong that his servant received healing in a different location. He was not on the phone, he's dropping on the conversation. But the impact of his faith healed his servant at home. And God said, he's going to give you the measure of faith. That they don't have to be close to you to be impacted by your faith. The woman with the demonic possessed daughter, her daughter was not there. But her faith challenges the hands of God. And even when God said, you don't deserve it. And she agreed with his sentiment. But followed by saying, yes, I'm a dog, but I deserve crumbs. Crumbs is enough for me. Her daughter was healed from that demonic possession. Because of her faith. And God said, that's the faith I'm releasing in this house. That's the faith I'm releasing. Who dare to catch it? Who dare to catch it? Who dare to catch this faith? It's been released in this house. I release faith. Faith to make it. Faith not only to believe God for the house, but the faith to have the stick to itness. Yes, faith to be resilient. Faith to stand upright and to say, for God I live and for God I die. I release and feign faith in this house. In the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and receive it. And receive your pastor at the same time. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just want to pray for the man of God. Just stretch your hands to him. Father, in the name of Jesus, your son, I just Oh uh, God, you have used them mightily, oh God, you have just opened up his spirit and you pour into us tonight. Lord, we now ask that you, oh God, give him and we fill him, oh God. We fill him with strength, oh God. We fill him with the anointing, oh God, strength again, Lord. Oh God, oh, and then continue to use him, oh God. Oh, in these end times, oh God, to challenge your people to come up higher in you. In the name of Jesus, we just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Minister Kerr, where's Minister Kerr? Praise God. Amen. Minister Byron, is he around? Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want no one to walk out of the sanctuary. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 13, I believe. Because it was impossible for God to lie. Because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. Next verse said, he said, Surely I will bless you. In other words, I will multiply you. He said, everyone that bless you, I will bless them. And everyone that curse you, I will curse them. What a statement. The preacher said tonight, when you hear the word, 
the word is God. Even before the Bible, there was the word. And the, speak, the, the preacher tonight asks you to sow an offering. That is a faith offering. Because faith cometh by and hearing what? The word of God. So he picked up an offering because he wants to sow into this ministry. Now we want to sow into him. And we're going to say, as if the word you just heard is the faith. And he said, I will bless those who bless you. We're not going to go to that part. But I will bless those who bless you. Now that's the preacher. His faith went to $25. Mine is going to 50 So I'm asking 10 people to come and sow into the you can't hear such a good word and not so into it. So I'm asking Mina, come, one, two. I need eight more people to sow $50 into the ministry of this gentleman. Could you put up Hebrews 10.36? I have, how many did I get here? Four? Two, four? For having need of patience, that after he have done the will of God, he might receive the promise. That's four. Can I have, are we going to have six more? We're going to have five more. This is what faith is. We're going to have three more. It's here. Two more. Faith come by hearing. And by hearing. The word of God. One more. I'm looking for one more. I'm not going to keep you longer. <laughs> Is there another one? Mm. Faith cometh by hearing. You see, it is easy. Oh, God, have mercy. Now, for those who don't have the 50 and you didn't give the 25, I'm pretty sure that you don't want to come because you did have that. You only have the 20. Bring it come. Or you have the 10. I'm not going to anything lower than 10. Because my God can't come to more than 10, so we're stopping at 10. So bring the 20 and the 10 come. We want to go home. We are, after this, we're gonna, I'm going to turn over to Pastor and he's going to bless uh, the, 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 into the ministry of the man of God. So come with the 20 and the 10. Sow a seed tonight. If you are here tonight and you can't afford the 50 and the, and the 25, make sure you don't leave here without sowing a seed into this atmosphere don't walk out of here tonight without sowing into this atmosphere hallelujah did everyone get an opportunity to sow into this atmosphere because he could swear by no greater he swear by himself. Listen, if you want to give an offering, I will go as far as if you want to make give an offering and you don't have it, don't feel embarrassed. We will, you can zeal it. And if zeal is too much, you can put a promissory note 
Because when God made promise to Abraham, he believed in promises. So I'm going to ask, could you put up the Zell number for me, please? Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the church to stand to their feet. And you sow a seed, I want you to stretch your hand over here. Because we're going to sow into the life of the ministry, the pastor. And while you stretch your hand, you're going to activate your faith. And you're going to tell God about the seed that you just sow, what you're expecting. Father, we want to thank you tonight. Thank you for the life of your people. Thank you for the faithfulness of your people. Father, for those who have stretched tonight and so into the life of this minister, Lord, we're asking you tonight that you will return unto them a hundredfold in the near future. Lord, that they will come even before the end of this week with their testimony proving how faithful you are. Thank you for your blessing upon your people. In Jesus' name, receive it tonight. Receive it tonight. Put your hands together and give God a praise. Praise him on credit for what he's about to do for you. Hallelujah. You haven't seen it yet. But he's about to do it. You'll find the Zell number up there if you so desire. God bless you. I'll call Pastor Robert. He's going to come. Uh, please don't leave. We have some refreshment downstairs that we uh, provided for you. And if you leave, we can't take it home. We can't leave it here. So please don't leave. Amen, Pastor? Will you just come? Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. You know, we talk about faith. And just before, I'm going to do the benediction, but I just want to give you guys a synopsis of how we have existed over the year. God have a way of doing what he does best. And we have to believe God. You got to trust him. And not just trust him, but you got to be obedient to him. He said, if you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the lamb. Praise God. Amen. That sign out there, see a sign out there? We had a sign and it was damaged. I think one of the storm blew it all the way down the road. We got it back, we straightened out, and we put it back up there. I'm telling you what, about faithfulness. We, we sow into other people's ministry. We don't just, we are never selfish in this house. And we sow. But I'm showing you the faithfulness of God. We see God just somebody driving down the parkway. Never know this person from Adam. Get off at that exit down there. Came round, look at the sign. Call me. Pastor, I want to give the church a sign. Don't live in this area. Live in Morris County. He said, he checked it. He said, is it okay for me to give you your church a sign? I said, no. I said, okay. I met with him. Tell me. He said, okay, don't worry about it. We come here one day. I thought I had to open the gates to let them in. And they come, the sign was out there. He had his people to come, put it up. I'm just telling you about the faithfulness of God. When you are willing and obedient, when you dis, you you're willing to sow into into other people's life, when you believe willing to share what God has blessed you with with others, God bless, praise God. But I'm gonna call him Pastor Thelma to come do the benediction. I haven't heard her. Praise God, Amen. It's not over till she speak. Praise God, Amen. <laughs> amen. Praise God. When you hear that, don't you believe when I get home, I fuss with him? I don't. I don't. I really don't. 
Praise be to God. Praise be to God. I just want to give God praise and thanks for what transpired here tonight. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. My God, didn't he preach? Thank you, Jesus. I can't hear you. I said, didn't he preach? To God be the glory. I praise God. I praise God for that vessel. Amen. And one of the things about him, to be honest with you, he's a very humble man. When I called him, he was as pleasant as anything, no, no spirit of pride, and to God be all the glory, praise be to God, hallelujah. The Bible said, when you humble yourself, you will be exalted, amen, amen. So my heart was, my heart is truly, truly blessed, and I thank God, I thank God for him being here Oh, God, uh, children, I thank you for just being obedient to your father. So may God, God can just use him. Amen. Thank you, guys. Continue to be humble and being obedient to him and continue to make his heart happy. So I give God thanks. Whatever he said tonight, I hope the church receive it. Amen. Praise God. And uh, I just want to tell you, Sister Shamela, praise God. And I want your pastor to hear you are such a pleasure to work with. Put your hands together with, for Sister Shamela. Amen. I've been on the phone with her. Never upset. Always a pleasant, sweet person. God bless you. Amen. Uh, even before I get to actually meet her, you know, you fall in love with her. Amen. And I thank you. The grace of God, hallelujah, is upon your life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And for each and every one, just don't leave yet. I want to say again, I thank Thank you. I receive, I receive, I receive because 25 years has not been easy for yours truly. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. When they didn't come after Pastor Robert, they came after me. And you're looking at somebody who has been through hell and I water. But God, but God, I am still standing hallelujah to give him the praise and the glory so it was hard for me to sit down because i know what he's talking about but god's faithfulness lead on amen i don't want to take up too much of your time because i know some has to go far and so forth but we have uh praise god a meal prepared for you downstairs but praise tabernacle members amen I'm going to ask you one favor. Please, let the visitors, please, take their food. Is that all right? Is that all right? Amen. Amen. So, please, we're going to ask the, uh, the members to just let the visitors go. Amen. Someone from the pastor's aid team, please get... Uh,